Well, we're back again. Um, Luke chapter 17. We're going to talk about the ultimate servant, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's turn in our Bibles to that. I, I hope you have a Bible. When I say the Bible, I mean the King James Bible. It's the Word of God in the English language. Many are going from it today, and um, you need to have the truth. You should know the truth. Not one jot or tittle change from it. And, um, and so we're talking about the ultimate servant, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's New Testament reading for today. Earlier we talked about our Old Testament reading and about Saul and, and David. We have Bible reading charts we follow, and I hope you do. If you don't have one, let me know. I'll get one to you. Okay, Luke 17. Um, let's start out chapter 17, verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible uh, what offenses will come, but woe unto them through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and be cast into the sea than he would offend one of these little ones, a saved persons, one of the new Christians. And take heed in yourselves if that brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Um, this is something I just watched a preacher and watch a lot of them, a lot of these modern day preachers. They, they, they know nothing about repentance and rebuking. Uh, no, no preaching against sin. You never know there's a place called hell. There's just someone this fake Jesus that they have that you're supposed to follow. And he'll take you to hell. Um, this Superman Jesus that'll make you Superman and you'll be all conquering. No. The Jesus of the Bible has to do with repentance. I'm so sick of these modern and so many are caught up with it. It's, it's actually, well, the reason for it is the Bible says Satan himself shall come as an angel of light. How much more his ministers, ministers of the of, of the devil, uh, will be come as the ministers of Christ for Satan himself. Satan himself changed an angel of light. So a lot of devil's preachers around. Watch out for him. Trespasses, sins. We're rebuked for our sins. You never, you never hear nothing about rebuking, uh, about calling people sinners. I listened to a guy just preached. Now, not, not, not a thing about our sin and our need for a Savior. Just Jesus is the one and follow him. Wrong Jesus. If we repent, forgive him. If we repent, Jesus forgives us. If someone sins against us and they repent, we should forgive them. That's what it says. It says, uh, uh, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. Oh, you're never supposed to rebuke anybody. No, yeah, you are. The Bible says you're supposed to rebuke. If he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, seven times in a day, and turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So forgiveness is a big thing. But how are you going to get forgiveness? It comes through repentance. Forgiveness comes through repentance. And uh, let us not forget that. Forgiveness comes through repentance. And how are some going to know uh, to repent if they're, if they're not told that they're a sinner and they need to repent just like it says of those that uh, if if we tell people and uh, it says uh, uh, if a brother trespass against thee rebuke him 
So we get rebuke from the Bible. There's not much talk about that. It's small, it's just Joel Osteen stuff, and it's all of this um, feel good stuff, and everything's good, and you know, there's no devil, no hell, and, and no sin. Just uh, oh, you want to be saved? Here, take Jesus. Pray this prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and rose again. Save me. Oh, now you're a Christian. He's going to bless you. Bless people. Coronavirus. Give your neighbor a loaf of bread. Look. <laughs> if my people, God's people, truly saved people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal their man. The Bible is full of rebuke against sin. It tells you what to do and not to do. You don't have very many people preaching about repentance and, and, and about sin and about hell and to escape the fires of hell. Uh, I'm just going to go on and keep praying. I ain't got time for these modern-day preachers. I'm just going to keep telling the truth, and I hope you get saved and turn from your sins. And if you trespass against these seven times, and the apostle said unto him, Lord, increase our faith. That's good. The apostles said, increase our faith. faith. And the Lord said, if he had faith as a grain of mustard seed, might say unto this, <clears throat> A sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant plowing uh, or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he is come from the field, Go and sit down at meat, and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherefore I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drinken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth I think that servant, uh, because he did the things that were commanded him, I throw not. This is what I texted out today. Uh, so likewise ye, when ye shall have done all these things, which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which uh, was our duty to do. God's servants, how do you become a servant? We have an example here. Then he tells a story about 10 lepers. Verse 11, and it come to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he turned unto a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. He had to, it's like this coronavirus, you got a separation. Lepers, it's, it's contagious up to this day, killing people. Um, up to this day, real leprosy, it's a picture of sin. And plagues and, and viruses and, and like the, the terrible leprosy all these years and used to be used to be a leper colony. and you had to stay separate like we're practicing this separation now they lift up their voice and said Jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said unto them go show yourselves unto the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet and gave him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Oh, the Samaritans were were hated by the Jews. Jews were very prejudiced people. Samaritans were half-breeds, half-breed uh, Jews. And, and uh, they were they were hated by the Jews. And, and this was a Samaritan. The Samaritan was thankful and saw the blessing of being healed of his um, leprosy, which is a picture of sin. And the other nine didn't, I guess, I don't know how many of them were Jews, probably all the other nine were. Just one guy was a Samaritan or a girl. I don't know if it was one guy or a girl. 
And Jesus answered, We're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Yeah. Where are those that I guess they haven't. They haven't seen their need for salvation. They haven't seen their need as a sinner like the picture of leprosy is. We're so afraid of this coronavirus. I think, personally, I don't know who am I. I'm not a doctor. But I think uh, uh, that I, I know it's a plague of God and I know it's contagious and that, but I think there there might be more scare tactics around this. And don't get me wrong. They're telling you things. It's good to wash your hands and keep separation, wear a mask, all that. That's good. I've been doing it. Maybe probably more than I should. And, uh, but it's a plague of God. And it hasn't brought people to the acknowledgement of God. Let's bring in the coronavirus. It's a big deal right now. We're supposed to be reaching the the end time of uh, being serious and getting back to normal. I don't know. They, You don't know what to believe. They said two million people were going to die in, in America. And now it's down. They say it's going to be 50,000. How can you miss these predictions and these experts? They don't know. And then, and then because they make such outlandish uh, predictions and then they they take credit for doing it. Oh, if it wasn't for what we did, so wonderful thing. Could have been two and a half million, it was only 50,000. I don't know. I don't know all about that. But I know this was leprosy here in the Bible. And uh, uh, were there not 10 cleansed? Verse 18. There were not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Yeah. Jews in general didn't get saved. They rejected Christ, crucified him. This stranger, this Samaritan, this half-breed. Remember, remember Jesus, when he met the woman at the well, she was Samaritan and she got saved. And oh, she was thankful like this Samaritan leper too, sinner, picture of sin, leper. But, oh, we've got to bow our knee and thank God. Deserving hell, desperately wicked hearts, nothing talked about. I listen to these modern-day preachers locally here and statewide, United States-wide, internationally. And they have this false Jesus that they're calling people to follow. Just have to choose the right God and follow him and you'll be God like him. That's a bunch of baloney. You have to find God. There's only one God. Like I saw, I preach on Facebook. I don't know much how to do it. My son-in-law, who's a preacher, he told me to, I used to take camera shots of stuff and upload it uh, or download it, upload it, I guess, to the internet, to YouTube. He says, Dad, you don't have to do that. All you got to do is hit live like I did today and I'm in it right now, live, and then hit finish. It's up. You can put it on YouTube if you want to or whatever. And that's about all I know about Facebook. But sometimes I go down there, I don't know, there's just so much foolishness on there and so much Oh, it's so much vanity and so much waste of time. But anyway, I'm just going down there a little bit, and, and I've seen this. Uh, there's a there's a Muslim lady, got the garb on, all dressed, covered up, and covered head up, everything, the whole deal. And uh, I, I like the way uh, uh, Muslim women cover up. Christian women ought to cover up, too. That's a good trait. Uh, Women ain't supposed to put their body on display showing their thighs and their breasts and and tight clothes and all this and that. And, and uh, Christian women used to dress modestly. Not today. They dress like Jezebel. And they go to the beach in a bikini. They don't care. Short shorts, all of that. Uh, so so-called Christianity. 
is in modest. But here she's all dressed up modest like a Muslim, and she had a sign, and she's holding this sign up, and she says, I am a, I am a Muslim. Can I follow Jesus? And I looked at the comments on there, and he says, oh, yes. Yes, you can, and you can follow Jesus, and Jesus takes everyone, and this and that. And, I, and there's all these positive answers from my guest Christians, but I thought a minute. See, it's a tricky thing. You walk down the street with a sign like that, I'm a Muslim, can I follow Jesus? Here was my comment. You could like it or lump it. I don't care. I don't even know if anyone responded to what I said. I said this. Think about it. I said this. If you follow Muhammad, she said she was a Muslim, had the garb on, you can't follow Jesus. You can't be a Muslim and a follower of Jesus because Jesus is exclusive. He's exclusive. You can't be a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Muslim and, or, and, and, and follow Jesus. You have to forsake all the false gods and, and all this other stuff and be exclusively and wholeheartedly for Jesus. It's not like joining other people that got religion. It's like joining uh, the Elks Club or the Boy Scouts or the, or the Girl Scouts or the Veterans of Foreign Affairs or Foreign Wars or something. No. Total commitment, repenting of your sin, seeing the vileness of your sin. The payment's been made. Jesus paid it. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Yeah. Oh my, what a wonderful thing. Follow Jesus. Yeah. And he said unto him, verse 19, Jesus speaking, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. Thy faith had made thee whole. Oh, what a statement. Faith in the blood of Christ. Faith in the resurrection, the gospel. Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. And he was buried. Rose again the third day. Recognizing the wickedness of your heart. Recognizing your heart is desperately wicked. You can do nothing to save yourself. And repent. Be delivered from the fires of eternal torment, the fires of hell. Not much said about it today, but they're not gospel preachers. They're, they're something else. These ones that have this follow Jesus, everything's going to be all right. He's Superman, and you're going to be Superman, and everything's going to be, oh, no, you, you ain't going to be saved without repentance, acknowledging your sin and humbling yourself and falling at it. Yeah. yeah. How foolish this false Christianity is today. I see it more and more. And preachers, because it's it works well. People love it. They don't want to repent. People want to live in their sins. They, they want to keep on living the way they were and, and claim heaven and claim victory and claim money, prosperity, salvation and prosperity. Watch out. Watch out. You ever been born again? Do you know you're nothing and God is everything? Will you follow that humble servant, Jesus? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden with burden of sin. Follow me. You see, most people, they 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 live a, a worldly life, and 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 they're like that. They're like that in this uh, the um, uh, proverb of the sower. Uh, and 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 it says, uh, 
uh, oh, it sounds good. And they say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to grab that. But they don't see that the real salvation comes with persecution. You can't just you got your life and you just pick up and, and pick up extra strength and now you're a follower of Jesus. He's going to bless your life, take care of you and take you to heaven. With You can go on and watch the same way with no repentance. Oh, no. Don't watch out. A whole bunch of people that think they're Christians aren't. Narrow is the way for you that find it. Wide is the road to destruction. But there's a vast, vast majority of so-called Christians in the past and especially today that will burn in the fires of hell because they've never repented and truly been born again. What about you? Are you with the fake Christianity and following the phony preachers? Or would you give your heart to Christ and repent bow at his feet like the one did the one leper yeah it said it says he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith had made thee whole faith that the savior had paid for your wicked sins faith that he's God no other name given amongst men where we must be saved let's get saved now I'm saved. I hope you are, but if you're not, turn from your sins right now. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you. I have a wicked heart. I need to be forgiven. I believe your precious blood cleansed me from all sins. I have faith that you're the Savior. You're the only one. You're the Messiah. I repent and turn from my sins. I believe you've died and shed your blood. Save me, who deserve hell and the fires of hell. And I call upon you now to save me, to give me new life in Christ. And ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.